Chapter 6 Behind the Tapestry The stairs seemed to go on forever. When they reached a small landing, Zadie felt along the wall for a button. As the button depressed, Zadie heard a loud bang behind him. The little light that had shone through the tapestry over the steel door disappeared. Zadie pressed another button, and fluorescent rods that hung from the ceiling sputtered out a dim gray light that hummed onwards towards a glaring brilliance. By the time they reached the bottom of the stairs, the room was brighter than the glaring schoolroom that Zeddy hated. The walls, however, were not bare like the school walls. They were stacked from floor to ceiling with books. Zeddy looked around in shock and amazement. "'What is this place?' Zeddy asked, slowly walking around the book-filled room. "'Has this always been here?' "'Yes, it has,' Zeddy answered. "'In the earlier parts of the twenty-first century, people called these rooms panic rooms.' They were used in case people broke into the house to steal things or to hide from oppressive governments. Believe it or not, those things happened very often back then. Well, they happened until about fifty years ago. What happened fifty years ago? Zadie asked curiously. Fifty years ago, the international government took over, Zadie answered. What? asked Zadie in confusion. He stopped walking and just stared blankly at his mother. The history books you study at school are wrong, Zadie. The IG has not been our government for the last 99 years. I know that you've been told that, but it isn't true. The year 2000 wasn't the start of a new millennial government called the IG. In 2049, the international government took over after a series of catastrophes destroyed the world that once was. They took power when countries and local government were weak. To keep that power, they had to change history so that as time went on, the IG would be all anyone remembered. Zadie tried to explain. But, Mom, why would they lie? Why would you lie to me if you knew what I was learning was wrong? Zeddy asked. Your father and I lied to you because we thought you were too young to bear the responsibility of knowing the truth. You see, Zeddy, if anyone so much as questions the IG, well, let's just say it isn't something that you come back home from doing, Zeddy answered. Are you telling me now because I asked you if we were free? Zeddy asked. Yes, Zeddy answered. We knew the day would come when we would have to tell you the truth, but we hoped it would be when you were older. We hoped we would be better prepared to protect you. I see now that we should have told you all along. Zeddy, we are not free. Not free the way people once were free. We have no elections to vote for who we want to lead this region of the world. We have no say in our laws or our choices. We have to do say and act as the IG demands, or we will be taken away to God knows where. The IG even takes children away from their parents if they excel at science or math. They train them and use them to further the technology the international government uses to control the populations. What about Dad? Zeddy questioned. He's a math whiz. Did they take him from his parents? Are grandmother and grandfather his real parents? Grandmother and grandfather are your real grandparents. Luckily for your father, he was in college before he discovered his talent for math and physics. But he is forced to work for the IG when they need him to work for them. He has no control over when the IG calls him to go off for a project. That is where he's been the last two months, working for the international government. The only reason he gets to keep his regular job is so that neighbors don't ask too many questions about where he goes or where he's been. His company thinks that he is working for them on his travels. It's all one lie after another, but your grandparents are your grandparents. Is that why I can't let people know how smart I really am? Zeddy asked, piecing the puzzle together. You were scared they would take me? We're still scared of that. We don't know what limits the international government would go to in order to get what they want. That includes taking you away from us even after you are grown, Zadie explained. Zeddy was overwhelmed. The world seemed to be tilted, and it felt like there was a chance he might fall over. His whole life he'd wondered why his parents would teach him so many amazing things and ask him not to let people know he knew them. He felt loyal to the international government. It was part of their daily message to make you feel like a proud, loyal constituent. But if they had no freedoms, what were they really loyal for? Mom, Zeddy said carefully, I believe what you're telling me. I do. But you never really answered what this room is and why we're here. Do you see all these paper books around you? Zadie asked. These books were my father's books. He was what the international government considers a terrorist. When the IG took over, they used new technology to erase the memories of anyone over ten years old. They thought that it would erase any threat to their power. But there were children who were alive and knew the truth. They didn't have their memories erased, but they knew better than to let on what they remembered. 
My father was part of a group that sought out and hid all the paper books they could find. They wanted them saved so the truth would never be completely forgotten. Your dad was a terrorist? Is that why he's gone? He was a terrorist according to the international government, but he was no terrorist. He was just a man who wanted to live in a world based on truth rather than lies. Luckily, he was never discovered. That is why his library remains. He left our world when a tram derailed in the Dakota province. Now I am the keeper of his library, and your father has helped me in this task. We want the truth to last so that one day the international government will not be able to hide its lies and its manipulations. One day the truth will be known, and maybe, maybe we might be free, Zadie answered. Nimue said that the fate of our last freedom rests on my shoulders. If we aren't free, then how can that be? asked Zadie uncertainly. We do have one last freedom. At least some of us have it. The freedom of knowledge. It is all that we hold on to in our hope that we can persevere. We have the knowledge, and maybe one day people will be able to know the truth. I've always prayed that they might, Zadie said with tears in her eyes. Zadie thought of all that had transpired that day. His father was missing. His neighbor was the Lady of Avalon, an ancient witch. His government was based on lies. His whole life had changed in less than eight hours. He thought and thought. His feet paced back and forth in the tiny room without his knowing. There was something that linked it all. Knowledge? Knowledge. Nimue said it was his power. He was almost scared to find out what that meant. I know you must feel overwhelmed, Zeddy. This is a great secret to carry. You will have to be very strong. We must protect the knowledge in these books. We can do it, but for now let's go get ready for bed. Maybe after a good night's rest things will look brighter. We still have each other, Zadie told her son. We still have each other, but that isn't the same as having a daddy too, Zadie thought, as he gave his mom a warm smile to reassure her.